This month's article in, or lead article in Quality Progress Magazine is on Bayesian statistics. And it is a very simplified approach to Bayesian statistics and how you would apply it to a manufacturing environment or to a quality environment. This theory has been around since the early 1800s, uh, first developed, we believe, by Reverend Thomas Baines, who was a, a Bayes, who was a, a uh, Presbyterian minister and part-time mathematician in the uh, early 1800s. Uh, he died probably not knowing that his theory was going to be one of the most popular theories in the statistics world for many, many years. Um, his, uh, his papers that he wrote on it were actually picked up by a very famous mathematician, uh, Laplace, who was Laplace was probably the most famous mathematician of all times. He took the theory behind it and uh, expanded it out and used it in various other applications and published on it uh, numerous, uh, numerous times um, and really expanded the theory on it. Uh, the theory probably sat dormant for the late 1800s to probably about the time of World War II. World War II is when it started expanding and started expanding in actual use. It was used during that period of time to uh, crack the uh, German code for the German uh, U-boats uh, uh, and uh, probably helped turn the tide of, the, uh, of uh, World War II. Uh, it has been used uh, in court cases uh, numerous times uh, since that period of time. Actually, um, Laplace was using it during court, time, court cases as well. So enough of the theory behind it. Uh, when I get done with this video, I will reference uh, several books on the, uh, on the area if you want to further read in this area. Um, but again, it's a very useful uh, theory behind it, and one that quite frankly doesn't follow common sense very well. So that's why it's a little bit different than um, what we would be thinking in terms of traditional logic path to tra traditional Six Sigma type analysis. So let's get into an actual application of one and walk through a very base level demonstration of it and then we'll show it how it might apply to the manufacturing or quality area. Okay, let's get into the uh, actual application of it and walk through an actual uh, demonstration of it from, a med from the medical field. Uh, this was actually an example that was written up in the New England uh, Journal of Medicine back in, 19, in the 1970s. Uh, let's take. Let's say that uh, you walk into you uh, you walk in for a test of a, of a particular disease, and the disease that you have is extremely rare. It affects only one percent of the population, and the testing for it is uh, ninety-five percent accurate. Um, you walk in there, and the, the question that was given to sixty-five doctors back in the nineteen seventies was, um, if I test positive. What is the probability that I have the disease? And uh, let's go through three options. We have 95%, 84%, or 16%. So what is the probability I have the disease? Um, more than half of the doctors that were at that answered the question uh, actually came back and said 95%, and that answer is uh, actually incorrect. Uh, the, uh, well, only 11 of them had it correct. And the correct answer is actually 16%. Uh, it uh, kind of illogical, doesn't quite follow what you would think, but uh, let's go through the mathematics of Bayesian's theorem on it and see if we can determine why it turns out to be 16%. So what we have here is we have a Bayes theorem. And it basically says is uh, let's take the probability of A given B and uh, what do we mean by that? Well, that's kind of a post, uh, uh, an afterthought. It basically says is, given that I tested positive for the disease, what is the probability that I have it? That's going to be a little bit different than what we see in this particular one, probability of B given A. In this particular case is, all right, what is the probability that uh, I'm going to test positive given that I have the disease? Now there's two differences between those two statements, and that is probably one of the keys to understanding Bayesian statistics and probably the area that is most misunderstood. But let's walk through the example of it. So we've got the probability of B given A, which in this case would be the probability that, I, that uh, I'm, I'm going to have a positive result given that uh, I've walked in there with it, with the disease. 
times the probability of A. And what is A? Well, that's the probability that I, that the, of what the population is, or how many, what's the world, what's the likelihood that I have the disease uh, to begin with when I walk in there. If you go to the next one, the basement of the formula, this right here is a repeat of the, of the, uh, of the numerator. So it's exactly as it's written up there. And all I'm going now is I'm going to add on to the denominator uh, the probability of B given that I don't have it. So it's kind of like this guy, but it's the, uh, it's the, uh, it's the uh, complement of it. Times the probability that I don't have it. Right? That uh, I walked in, that the population is, uh, is low, and what's the probability? I'm not going to have it when I walk in there. Well, let's work through the actual example that we have on this and see how, it, or how this Bayes' theorem actually works uh, through the problem. So let's take it, uh, let's take the probability of um, that I have the disease, uh, probability that I'm going to test positive, given that I have it when I walk in there. Well, that's actually the 95%. So let's work through that one. It's 95%. Times P sub A. What's the problem? P sub A? P sub A is the probability that uh, I'm going to have it if I walk in there. Well, it's a rare. It's 1% of the population. So there's a 1% probability that I'm going to have it once I walk right in there. And then we're going to take this term right here, which is identical to the numerator, and then we're going to add on to it probability that I'm going to test positive for the disease given that I don't have it, not A, that I don't have it when I walk in there. Well, what's that? Well, that's the, uh, that's the 5%. That's basically the alpha error, if you've looked at pre prior uh, uh, videos of mine. Kind of analogy to uh, calling it guilty when actually it was not. So that's, uh, that's actually a 5 percenter. Times the probability that I don't have it. Well, what is that? Well, that's the complement of the 1 percent. And if you walk through the mathematics on it, it works out to right around 16%. Uh, interesting, isn't it, that uh, we've got two competing forces going on inside uh, Thomas Bain's formula on it. What are these actual terms up here? And why isn't it 95%? Well, you know, if you walk through the terms on here, <coughs> the probability of B given it's A, that's, that's how accurate the test is. So think of that as a 95% accuracy of the test. So the, the less accurate your test is, the, um, <coughs> the, higher pro the lower probability that you're going to have the disease when you come through the test. Well, that kind of makes a little bit of a sense. I mean, if you're in a manufacturing operation and you have a very sloppy instrument and you get a test result back from it, the uh, information regarding how, how accurate your testing mechanism is has a lot to do with uh, the, the, the believability of the outcome of the, uh, of, the, of the test. But the other one is the one that's kind of key to Bayesian statistics. And that one is kind of a piece of A. It basically says is <clears throat> our past knowledge of how rare the disease is uh, enters in to our estimation as to whether of the accuracy of the, uh, of the information that we're going to get back. In this particular case, there was only 1% of the population that had it. So, um, so the less likely it is, the, um, the less likely it is that I'm going to have the, uh, have the disease. Well, that, that kind of makes sense. If the, uh, and let's take that particular example to the extreme. Let's say that um, a female walks into a doctor's office and mistakenly is uh, tested for uh, prostate cancer and the prostate uh, test comes back 
and says that uh, yet positive, um, uh, she has uh, she has prostate cancer. Well, in this particular case, what is piece of A? Well, piece of A is the probability that you're going to have when you walk in there. Well, if you're female, that's probably going to be zero. So, in that particular case, Bayes' results in this particular analysis, this one turns out to be zero percent probability. So, it actually does work in the extremes uh, in the uh, in the formula. So the rest of all this is kind of the, the ratio between how, how, uh, how likely the outcome is going to be and how good your measurement system is in the entire process. So Bayesian statistics can get very, very complicated. There's, very, very, there's a, a high level graduate statistics courses on this whole area, but on a very simplified basis, it basically comes down to a very simple formula that says, don't forget, you've got to look at how rare the probability is when you go in to have it tested, and, uh, and uh, how accurate the measurement system is that you have off of it. Now let's go into the next phase and look at it in terms of what would happen if it walked into an industrial application type environment. Okay, let's get into an actual industrial application of Bayesian statistics. And let's use it as if we were in a uh, automotive manufacturing or automotive supply facility. And let's do it for a customer supplier application. Uh, let's take a machining operation, and let's say the machining operation was not particularly that good and was running at a uh, three sigma level and uh, with a defect rate approximately equal to 2.7 out of 1,000. We'll round off for this purposes down to uh, 3 out of 1,000 or 0 .003. And let's say that the test is 95% accurate, meaning that uh, at, the, at the customer's facility that the, um, the accuracy of uh, whatever it is over there is at best 95% and there's an actual 5% false rate off of it. Um, customer calls you up and says we've got a bad part on what my plant sorted. What can Bayesian statistics do for you in this particular area? Well, let's walk through an actual application of where it might work. Uh, let's go through it again. Probability of A given B. Let's uh, kind of think of that in terms of the probability that I really do have a bad part, given that uh, that he, he found a uh, that he uh, measured one and found it bad. Well, let's go through the uh, formula one more time. It's the probability of B given A, all right, and uh, that's the probability that, uh, given that I did ship a bad part in there, or we did ship a bad part in there, that it actually tested, uh, tested, um, uh, tested accurate. And that would be the 95%. Times the probability that I'm going to ship one into the facility, and uh, in this particular case, it's, uh, it's only equal to 0 0.003. Notice when you go through the formula on this, it's that the greater the, the lower this percentage, the, the uh, Less likely you're gonna, you're gonna, you're, you're less likely you're gonna believe the outcome of the uh, of the test. And then we're gonna take that reading and we're gonna duplicate it down here. And then all we're gonna do is to add in to the denominator the probability of B given that uh, we uh, not A, and that's actually going to be the five percent or the complement of the hundred of the ninety-five percent. And then the probability of not A, which is going to be the complement of the point zero zero three. So let's go through the mathematics on it and we're going to take the first reading up there which is equal to the point nine five times the probability of A and think of that in terms of the prior medical example is the probability that I have the disease when I'm walking to the medical office or to the doctor's office or the population of the world that has it. And then all we're going to do is we're going to take those two numbers and du du duplicate them below, and then we're going to add on two other numbers out here. First one will be the complement, 0 0.05 times probability of not, which is 0.997, which is the complement of that guy. When you work this all out, works out to be approximately 5%, 5% probability that you're going to believe it. 
Now, obviously, this depends upon several things. Number one, it depends upon how, uh, how accurate you're going to be at 95%. And in the article, in Quality Progress, we go through different levels of the 95% to see what effect it has on this actual number coming out down below, or the 5% probability that we have an issue with it. We also change it from a 3 second signal level to a 4, to a 5, to a 6 signal level. So that we can see what the effect is on the process and how accurate or how good the process is and what the effect that is in comparison to what we have coming out as the uh, believability of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the report. This itself is, based, is the base level Bayesian statistics. And it's a, a very simple formula that has used, been used for almost 250 years now. Uh, in a minute here, I'll go through three references for you uh, to, if you were interested in this area, to carry it on further. Uh, I hope you open up and read the uh, Quality Progress article. We go and we explain this a lot further, and we go into a lot more detail in this whole subject matter. I'm going to conclude with three recommended follow-up readings on, on, uh, on this particular area. And the first one I'd like to talk to is uh, by uh, Dr. Peter Olofsson's uh, out of uh, Tulane, and it's Probabilities, the Little Numbers That Rule Our Lives. Uh, this excellent, excellent book is very entertaining and very easy read and has an entire section on the application side of Bayesian statistics and a lot of references that I have in, uh, have shown in there has, uh, has come from his book. Uh, the second one is uh, by Sharon uh, McGrain and it's a theory that would not die and uh, it was, gives a complete history of the uh, theory from actually from the 1800s all the way up to uh, present data on Bayes, uh, specifically to uh, Bayesian statistics. Uh, it's uh, for a history buffs more than application side of it and it tells you a lot about uh, things about how it was used for the uh, and now for, uh, for studies done on the correlation or causation between smoking and lung cancer and uh, how it was used during World War II and how it originally came into place from uh, Laplace and from, um, from Bayes himself. The final one on it is an academic area and uh, it is by uh, Andrew Gelman and several other authors. It's uh, Bayesian uh, Data Analysis. Uh, this one is a very uh, academically based uh, subject and it's one used primarily for uh, undergraduate courses in Bayesian statistics or in graduate level statistics courses as well. But uh, if you're into the, uh, the in-depth uh, concepts behind it, this is an excellent book uh, for that particular area. Whichever way, I hope, you, uh, I hope you read the article in Quality Progress magazine, and I also, also hope you uh, look at uh, other videos that I have out on my website. Uh, my website is at uh, WilliamHooperConsulting.com. And uh, we have um, about five or six of them, particularly more so in the design of experiments area, which is kind of my specialty offer. Thank you.